Democratic Alliance leader John Stain is in his under fire for calling Gauteng crime wardens drunkards who found who were found rather in Shibins. He made the, the remarks while on the campaign trail in Pretoria over the weekend. Uh, some social media users are accusing Stain Hazen of being racist with his comments uh, as the DA faces an exodus of black leaders. For more on this uh, and uh, of course uh, the party itself and its position, particularly around its black leaders, we're joined now by former DA member uh, Ngaba Banga as well as uh, former DA member Patricia uh, Gopane. You can be a part of the conversation on 072-110-5584 this evening. Good evening to you both and thank you very much uh, for your time. I know you have various other political homes and aspirations of being in other political homes uh, now. But we just want to talk a little bit about your past and where you come from, uh, especially considering the, the events of, of recent times. Uh, Dr. Banga, is the DA purging itself from black leaders who want race-based kind of redress? Um, you will remember that uh, uh, last year in February, as I was doing my last address as the leader of the province live on News uh, 445, I said that uh, challenging the, the membership uh, of, the, of the DA in the Eastern Cape, that the DA, for it to be able to take over the leadership in South Africa, it needs an emotional sort of a, a connection. With, with South Africans, uh, because in particular black South Africans, you, you, that uh, they need to change to be a party that can try, uh, celebrate, and connect with South Africans. Because uh, the DA, if I can tell you, is one of the parties with best systems uh, of uh, election, electionary systems in South Africa. Uh, we can't dispute that. Uh, it's, we have a very good track record. In governance, that cannot be disputed. But South Africans don't trust uh, the DA because of the lack of that connection, uh, in particular the black middle class, because the black middle class, they're like an abused spouse, which wants to leave a certain relationship but very scared to go to a new relationship. That the level of lack of trust of South Africans to, to what the DA is today with all the things that it can do, because South Africans misses that emotional connection, in which I've been raising. Two, South Africans want the racial question to be discussed. I mean, uh, suspect Patricia, when she was the leader uh, of the first state, I was the leader in the East Cape, we consistently raised the issue of importance to South Africans, in particular the majority of South Africans, black South Africans, of diversity and redress. Yeah. And we said, without us affirming this and admitting that there is something that is called white, white privilege, and the DA should acknowledge that in order for it to appeal to those who were disadvantaged by, by the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of the people fought us, and Musimai Mane, when he was pushing that, he was then a, a, a paged, and many of other leaders uh, were paged. And we raised these issues internally, uh, in the past and say that the party will become irrelevant to the majority uh, of black people because black people want people who can cry, yeah. uh, respond to their problems, uh, they celebrate with them, and that was what was lacking. And I'm happy that I said it publicly and I said it in platforms of the DA. Yeah. That's what is lacking yeah. as we speak right now the DA. May Patricia, uh, 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 is the race debate an albatross on the neck of the Democratic Alliance, or as young people say, this is the mountain that the party is willing to die on, is this question of race and how it's addressed within the party. What has been your experience? Yeah. yeah. So, sorry, okay, that's, that's for Patricia, yeah. Okay, sure. Okay. Thank you for, for the opportunity. You know, being 20 years, almost 20 years of my political life in the DA, something that I've been advocating for, uh, the DA on its written policy, they talk about diversity. That is the party that accommodate each and every one on the written policy. That's the reason why I joined the Democratic Alliance. And uh, I was working hard to make sure that diversity, we represent everyone in South Africa. But unfortunately, 
the DA as a party has a system in place that will make sure that uh, the black people, uh, they, they don't survive. They will make sure that you suffocate. That's how the system is being designed. The DA only accommodate black people when you have to put the white people into positions. If you can ever look at the membership of the Democratic Alliance, majority are black people who are hardworking people. You can check now during the election campaign. The poor people, they will be outside in rainy days, sunny days, doing, you know, door to door, committed that they want to change South Africa. But unfortunately, if you look around, their own white counterpart, they, are, they won't be there on the street. They will be somewhere sitting in their own office, whining and dining. Others during the hard campaign, they will take overseas trips. So, and, but when the list come of the people who are supposed to represent the DA, those hardworking black people, they are not recognized. And the system is being designed in such a way that these hardworking people, they can't even express themselves during the interviews or anything else, but they are hardworking people. They are the one who brings the numbers. And uh, that, that's how the system is designed, that black people cannot make it in the DA. It is so sad that after 20 years, uh, since 2019, that is the, during the leadership of John Stenhazen, there's been exodus of many credible black leaders who left the Democratic Alliance. And those people, they were just not ordinary uh, activists. Yeah. They were leaders that they were in parliament. So t t Arthur, t t talk to me you what happened, talk. especially, Mayor Patricia, so for somebody who's been there for 20 years and, and, and you've seen this change. What happened from a party that would have uh, at some point voted, for example, for the Black Economic Empowerment Amendment Bill, for the Employment Equity Amendment Bill, on the basis that would have said as long as it's done on merit and it's, it's, it's done to, to, to address uh, the, 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 re, the, the wrongs of the past. Yes, we will support it on those basis. What has changed to a party where now it's completely rejecting the bill? You know what I can tell you? Uh, uh, we've seen the red flags that this party, it has changed. Whatever written policies that were there, we all believe in them. We were all fighting for, like my colleagues Banga said, we raised these issues that we need to connect with South Africa because we always believe that the, the DA, it is the party that will make sure that will recognize the injustice of the past. And whatever that we are doing, even where we are governing, will make sure that, uh, you know, we protect the marginalized, the vulnerable, we make sure that we're going to deliver service delivery to all those. But look at the situation in the Western Cape now. You compare the Constantia, you, con you, you compare the Kailisha. It's a different world altogether, but it's the same government. Year in, year out, uh, how can the department of uh, the, the money has been taken by the Treasury from human settlement? The houses were not built for the black people. So it, every time we used to raise those things. Mm -hmm. On paper, the policies were very good, and uh, definitely, but something went wrong. Because at the end of, you must remember, everything started to went wrong in 2019, when the DA started to realize they've lost a wide votes uh, to, towards Freedom Front Plus, because that was a time when we lost the white votes. Uh, when, uh, you know, Freedom Front Plus, they gained from two people, to eight seats in parliament. And the DA was sort of panicking and felt that, you know what, the black people, we don't care for them. I remember the first meeting when Helen Zilla addressed us during FedEx meeting as leaders. He was even referring to us to say, this party tried everything to make sure that the black people vote for the DA, but they are not even vote for the DA, despite that you are having token leaders. And in that meeting, things went wrong because we challenged Helen those were the words from Helen, that they are no longer going to invest in anything to do with the black people, but they will make sure that black people were there to make them to occupy the positions. Look here in the free state. You can even check at the Congress, the outcome of the Congress. Black people were in numbers, but look at the leadership. Black people are nowhere to be found. 
So it is obvious a uh, democratic alliance they knew themselves, white people among themselves, that they don't want black people. You can hear the utterances of Tony Leon when he clearly says that Musi was one of the failed experiments. Some of us, because we're vocal, we, we never allow ourselves to yeah. be the, the yeah. tested, you All know, right. experiment. That, 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 let's That's bring Naba let's, let's, let's into that. How, 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 how then were arguments made and worn within the DA, especially for black leaders in the party? Look, I, I must say, we, 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 when Musuma Imane was the leader of the DA, you know, we, we had a progressive uh, thinking of leadership. I mean, we had a, a balanced, a diverse leadership uh, throughout provinces and also um, in, the, in the federal uh, executive, you know. And uh, uh, voices were listened. We, we worked as a group, as a collective, uh, we challenged Musi on a number of issues. We pushed hard on the conversations that South Africans were talking about. I mean, the issue of diversity was was a, a, a fundamental issue. The issue of land. We wanted the day to discuss the land question, South Africa, because South Africans wanted to discuss land. We said we must discuss. We said we can't avoid a discussion on the issue of race uh, because it's a key issue that divides South Africa. And we have a history that deals with the issue of race. Because if you want to build an equal society, a society for all, it is not only a superficial issue. It's an issue about ownership. We wanted to talk about the relations to means of production, how black people own, because black people do not own the means of production, do not control the wealth of the country. That's the reality. That's the fact that the, the, the wealth of South Africa is still divided on the basis of race and you said this but how, how did you want how, how did you stay that Ubanga when then the party says no 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 the criteria should not be race the criteria should not be gender the criteria should not be uh, disability but those can be plus factors uh, it should not be the sole consideration this was a breaking point where you saw a number of people they starting to to, to leave uh, by the way we were we were attacked. My fight with Helen Zin uh, was was around this issue uh, in particular. Uh, to say that, that we cannot avoid discussing an, the issue of redress based on the collective because black people were were oppressed as a collective, not as individual. And this issue uh, of saying you can empower one individual to change society uh, it doesn't make sense. It will take us two thousand years to to achieve that. But regressing and, and, and developing people as a collective and addressing the imbalances of the past is an issue. When she came back, I mean, when she came back, Patricia, I will tell you, she started to say, we are not going to have race, race based policies. What we said to her is that redress in South Africa can never be defined outside the issue uh, of, a, of a racial uh, a society in a, in for you to achieve truly an unracial society. Equity is one of the issues which is important yeah. to address using it as a tool uh, to change uh, the problems of South Africa. Right. And some people, I mean, black and white, it's not a black issue. There are a number of uh, white uh, uh, people who believe in this concept that redress is a very important issue, that they acknowledge, they acknowledge the, uh, 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 um, white privilege is an important issue. Yeah. Therefore, there are still many, many people in the DA, colored, black, and Indians, who still believe that the shift right. in the policy of the DA have regressed the DA to what it is today. All and right. that's why uh, people are leaving. I think the main problem is uh, Helen Zill's ideas, because she believes that uh, black people cannot make a contribution uh, uh, going forward right now in the DA. As Patricia has said, she said it before, and she's excluding a lot of people. And I have said it before when they started to send me to, to the DC that her problem is that yeah, she, she's got a program of excluding uh, people, in particular those who are in leadership under Muslim Iman. I think she has finished us. I think it was the last one <laughs> in December who was excluded, who worked with uh, a Muslim Iman. But we stood against that, I told her. I was not going to fold my arms and watch a person 
imposing and breaking us. She have just destroyed the Eastern Cape. I led the Eastern Cape for six years. Peaceful, united Eastern Cape. I was supported by whites and blacks and colored. And people are heartbroken because they don't understand why I was suspended for telling a person who she is because she's very divisive. Yeah. She's, a, she's a racist, as I've said before. And she makes sure that she destroys leaders because well, she believes in the thing of uh, excluding people on the basis of race. Patricia, let's wrap it up with you. I mean, the, the approach to a colorblind society versus the approach to a colorblind democratic alliance, what, was it a reality within the party itself at the time that you were there? Can you please repeat again? I'm saying the Democratic Alliance speaks of a colorblind society. Was that a reality uh, within the party? Was it a colorblind party? You, you know what is happening? I, I just wanted to reiterate what my colleague said. We did try to sit down with those people and explain how South Africa is happening. Those people, they used to behave like they're in another planet, who are in another planet. They've lost touch with reality. Many times we explain, because you must remember being a black person during my time, 20 years ago when I joined Democratic Alliance. I sacrificed my profession. I sacrificed my family. I was treated like an outcast to join the Democratic Alliance. Just imagine how much I try to, to, to raise issues to say that this country belongs to all of us. We need to, we, we, we come from a painful history, and this country, we cannot afford that there's inequality in our country. And uh, we did have a good policy, but this party, they never wanted to implement what is written with the policy. But I'm, I'm excited, I'm relieved that I became part of Action SA, because when I left the Democratic Alliance, I, I, I had no hope about my political future. But the action, action SA gave me hope and gave me, you know, a positive and a lasting opportunity to change South Africa. Yeah. Because we really believe that now is the time for South Africa to leave race. Race is part of our history. We, rec we should recognize that. But going forward, we need to say to ourselves, government must really make sure that they focus, it must be a pro, a, a, a pro poor government that will make sure that the marginalized people because of the history, they must be looked after through delivering a basic service delivery, providing a quality healthcare, providing, you know, a, 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 a quality education, making sure that South Africa becomes a, a, a country where economy is okay. growing, where the wealth of people is not just going to be on paper. Yes. It must be equal. That's right. all that you want. You want right. an inclusive country. That's why the, uh, the, the Action SA, it is the only party now that is attracting all people in different ways. Okay. If you check the statistics let, let, uh, of uh, the, I, the I, results I, of 2021. I, I, I'll call you back. Mayor Patricia, I'll call you back. To, to, come, and, to come and speak about Action SA. That was not the conversation today. I'll bring you back. I want to come and talk about that a little bit uh, when, when I bring you back. But let's leave it there for tonight. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for coming on. Uh, that is uh, former DA members, Naba Banga and uh, Patricia mm -hmm. Komani. By the way, you might be wondering why the Democratic Alliance is not a part of this conversation. We did reach out to them, and this is their response. Unfortunately, no takers on this one. We will let it pass. The official line is our policy is premised on uh, uh, not on racial divisions. We promote a conducive environment for anyone and everyone uh, in the party. That is the uh, response that we got from them. Let's take a look at uh, what uh, your comments are saying tonight uh, on uh, the WhatsApp Live. The Democratic Alliance claims to be a party that builds a future based on freedom, fairness, opportunity and diversity for all. But it used black people just like the National Party did. Sulu Gure from Bethlehem. Anonymous saying the day is not the problem. Many of these people are opportunists who are careerists just uh, about ending in, uh, just about ended in the party. Whose career rather just about ended in the party, I beg your pardon. E.G. Kumara Mulefo uh, just lost to Solim Simang for the position of Houting leader. About four months ago, Mbalin Duli lost to John, John Stenhazen for the position of party leader and left not long thereafter. Some of your thoughts. Much appreciated. Thank you very much uh, for uh, coming.